Welcome everybody to the second workshop video for the Critter Tales player setting. Um, this is the RWD gaming channel that's rolling with disadvantage gaming. Uh, we do all sorts of gaming videos right now. We got some tabletop and Overwatch videos and we're hoping to uh, get some more up here. Today I'm joined with Philip again, uh, my partner in crime for this setting. Um, how are you doing today, Phil? What's up, guys? So, just wanting to get some more videos up here. Uh, the last video, uh, Philip, you definitely put some solid questions my way um, about things that I want to include in every um, game or consonants or variables that could change throughout the games. So, I guess the same question to you is, what is something that you foresee to be in every one of your games in particular, maybe not? Um, yeah, okay. Um, that's, a uh, yeah, I've definitely been thinking about that. And so, you know, basically I want this setting to feel kind of like the red wall world, or at least like this, this critter world where I imagine like everything to be very natural and nature focused and like, and the the main theme i guess of this setting is kind of that feral tendency versus civility and community tendency so i would think that using those guidelines in every setting i would like to try to include like some spiritual or like uh ancestral ties to these creatures like you know a premonition one of these creatures has a premonition a vision speaks to some ancestor creature if or i like, can uh, in, say something right there i was yeah. actually thinking i was reading red wall and it was like how do like instinctual things come across because like some things are pure just like they just do shit and it works out you know well and one of the things that i kind of overlooked was dreams so like starting a game where it's like your character is having a dream and this might be you know the description of the enemy or kind of like a light over thing but like like you're saying with uh seers and oracles if you will yeah um, prophecies like in exactly. salamander strong you know there's this mural that shows all of these grand warriors and martin's on there as along with like all the those badgers and you're like Whoa. right and that's stuff to come and stuff that's happened so yeah um i think that prophecy and oracles and you know seers or div divineer diviners or diviners however you pronounce yeah. it yeah those would be pretty important or just a cool mechanic to play with for like plot hooks and whatnot. Exactly. I think at least one creature from the party should have some sort of tie like that premonition. Whether yeah, it's like it doesn't they're necessarily interacting have, with the gypsy. Right. It doesn't necessarily have to be like a lineage tie. Like there isn't a direct yeah. connection between Matthias and Martin. Uh, per se, right. but it is the implication that, oh, you know, Matthias is the reincarnation of Martin. So, like, yes, exactly. It would take a little bit of working with your players and stuff, but I, I know that that would be a cool, like, story mechanic. And I that's kind of what I've been thinking about in a lot of my games recently is just like focusing the plot more on like character goals and like why. I've had parties like, well, why are we doing this? And it's like, well, to be honest with you, I don't fucking know. You're, yeah, <laughs> you, you I, guys are just... I feel like that's, you know, <clears throat> so you, you said you just recently played in a game GM'd by Drake, right? Yeah. So uh, I've found that he does that really well where he will frequently talk to players before the game and kind of cater the story to 
what your character's goals are. Right. And so I was like, oh, when I played in a game with him and he did that, I was like, oh, geez, okay. That's how I have to try to approach all these games is like really player right. character driven. You ha- you, we we as players we give our characters a lot more like intuitive knowledge than they really have. Like yeah. I like it when people are like, "But would my character know that?" It's like, good question. Did so and so tell you? And if that person's like, "No," it's like, "Well, then no, you don't fucking yeah. know anything." Yeah. So, yeah, that is definitely something I took away from Drake's game from like a game master standpoint is. Like giving every character like their own motivations and like special things that they gotta do on a quest, so it's not just like, oh, you're killing the boss. It's like you're tr- you're fucking pissed because this boss eradicated your family. You're mad because you got into a fight with this dude at some point. You know he's kidnapped your son, so you all everyone will have their own motivations and stuff, and that's kind of what uh ties into like the prophecy and oracle aspect is because like nobody yeah. all gets the same prophecy it doesn't work out that way exactly exactly <clears throat> um and that kind of yeah i think that's great what you were saying and it reminded me that i think revenge is kind of a big part of it also right. or like you know, maybe not specifically revenge, but just like a, a good villain. Well, there's usually multiple kind of villains, but uh, I think yeah, revenge is usually a major. I plot mean, point. In, on the good end of the spectrum, it's called justice when you're the good guy. Yeah, it's not revenge; yeah. it's justice. Yeah. Okay. Exactly. So revenge versus justice, maybe even. Yeah, something to ask the players, like, what is your interest in this right now? It's like, well, I've been having terrible fucking nightmares for the last three days, and they're all telling me to do this. So I would like the nightmares to stop. Yeah. So I'm, I'm on my way. Right on. Usually yeah. there's like, yeah. Um, let's see. But I know fucking, like, spirituality, that's what I was going to say uh, when you said that, is, like, ghosts and stuff. And, like, it, yeah. uh, I think it's really important, I guess, to kind of go to each player and be like, all right, well, you need, like, a couple ties into the lore of this world. So it's mm-hmm. like, where exactly are you from? Where do you fit in? What do you know about? So, yeah. like... My my buddy Jay, he I told him a little bit about the setting he wants to play. He's got a computer that works. Nice. He is, I told him about a couple of, like the Fox Fay that I'd come up with, and like one of them is a representation of luck. So if you like stumble into this Fay, you're granted tremendous luck that you never. And it's not even necessarily something you notice. You might just come out um, <laughs> with a longer stick in the end. Nice. Um, and he's playing a fox that comes from, like, the desert region. So he stumbles onto this fucking deity-like fox and is granted great luck. And he uses it to his advantage. He becomes very successful. But over time, he just gets accustomed to it. And it ultimately seems like my luck's running out. I need to get some more luck because I'm just not as lucky as I used to be. So he actually goes out in search of this fox. And if you find this fe- deity in like a selfish or greedy reason so like the first time he stumbled upon it on accident the second time he sought it out on purpose Ooh. you are cursed with bad luck and so his character has good luck and the blessing of good luck and the curse of bad luck so it's like he's on two polar ends of the spectrum oh, so like man. some things in his life he's considerably lucky at and other things he like gambling was one of the things that we were talking about is like he cannot gamble to save his life (laughs) but that's hilarious so those were like his couple ties to this universe so like having an ancestor or like my character gilderoy lightfoot is the descendant of like the champion hare um yeah 
that is a tie that's kind of important because then I have motivations in cities and I know in our group we all kind of had our own um, goals in mind so yeah. I, just, I like that uh, aspect of dungeon mastering I guess yeah exactly you got to tie the char- the player characters in with the story um so you have been working on the setting guide Mm -hmm. and we were just talking about character creation yeah so i just to kind of jog our memory here uh we have the quick quick conversion which is like the standard races from dnd 5e um and their critter equivalent Mm -hmm. and then we have our character or critter creation um which i think is uh a lot better for this particular setting Uh, i know you and i have talked about it but a lot of critters have the same traits um good hearing uh some sort of different movement speed whether it be climb or dig or whatever they got low light vision they are mostly nocturnal but we're not really playing off that too much so we uh we have a different way of creating characters um i know you've done more with it than i have so if you kind of just want to walk me through it because i'm going to be rebuilding my character with it yeah so um first you know you're going to choose two abilities, one major and one minor. Uh, well, first things first, I'm going to choose a race, right? That, well, yes. Is that is that our – would we choose stats first or we choose the race first and then choose stats? That's, that's a good point. <laughs> I should emphasize that, yeah. <laughs> first, you're going to choose what critter type you want to play, you know. Do you want to play a hedgehog? Do you want to play a desert hare? Do you want to play a forest hare? Do you want to play a river otter? Do you want to play, you know, basically whatever woodland type creature you want to play, that's what you're going to think in mind. Badger, mouse, And we'll have a list of these available when... We get something put together, but I mean, yeah. any woodland critter is pretty much viable as long as it meets like the, the critter aspect. Yeah. So for the record, I'm choosing forest hare because I believe that is where I originate from is the Heartland Forest Meadows. Great. So first you're going to choose a major and minor ability. Um, One, the major ability is gives you plus two to that ability, and the minor gives you plus one. So, you know, for a forest hare, I would say... Charisma? What was that? Yeah. Was it Charisma? I mean, that makes sense. The, The forest hares are more civilized. They got a large set of civilization. They have a hierarchy, a royal family. So charisma makes sense in my mind. And probably dexterity. Yeah, dexterity was my plus two. um, Oh, yeah. Exactly. So dexterity and for your major, and then charisma for your minor. Exactly. Right on. Um, What do we got next? My size. Um, Exactly. So I wanted to do something kind of special for creature size. Because I think, you know, some of these creatures can really vary in size, specifically mice, rats, weasels, ferrets, those squirrels, uh, those types of creatures, I think, can be, you know, either pretty small or pretty big. Um, And I wanted you to be able to kind of shift the scale from small to medium or large on some of these creatures. Um, um, just to 
I had a thought, and this is actually the thought that I forgot last time that I could mm -hmm. not remember, is I think we should have like a little like asterisk at the bottom of some races that just are the limits that this particular race would have, um, size being the one. Sure. Because like there's not like the shrew, you aren't going to see like a large shrew. You're better Definitely. off just being like so. Like, yeah, you're that's going. Like, to... You could be small to medium with this one. Or yeah, most of them large. be on the small to medium range. A few of them will be on the medium to large. Right. Uh, that was that was actually the, um, the thought that I had lost last week. That's a good. Yeah, that's a good. good um, I'm gonna go with medium sized. Uh, I don't okay. picture my guy any bigger, or smaller than anyone else. Yeah, um, and so that I would, would actually just be the so standard. I would say for hairs in general, they would be on the medium to large range. Probably not so much on the small range. What would what would you say? Um, I think maybe the forest hair could be on the small to medium. Okay. And then, like, the desert or uh, arctic hair could be, like, medium to large because they're the more. Okay. Yeah. All right. Um, cool. So then you're going to choose your movement type. So for these woodland creatures, there's a lot of... Right. And that they can have climbing, burrowing. And that's play. something that we'll also have uh, included with our critter options. Um, so it's not Swimming. like you don't just get to choose whatever one you want, I guess. Like if you're a squirrel, you get a climb speed. If you're a rabbit, you just get increased movement. If you're uh, a mole, you get dig speed. So exactly. you can't really, yeah. I, I'm a mole I, with a swim speed. Yeah, that, that wouldn't make sense, you know. That's yeah, it's up to you to like I think it's up to the, the the DM to kind of like regulate the player and say, No, 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 that doesn't that doesn't make sense. Right. But you know, let's take a rat for instance. I think maybe yeah. a rat you could give possibly swimming speed or possibly climbing speed or, or bird possibly speed. nothing. Right. Yeah. Maybe. Maybe even burrowing speed. But I. I think. Uh, um. That would be kind of like the very, in, not necessarily variant, but the the diversity of rat slash mouse being like the human. Yeah. The one. They're they're just exactly they're totally adapted bull for any environment really. Right. Yep, so for hair, uh, I'm increased movement speed by 10. Okay, exactly. You're exceptionally quick, and I think that makes total sense for a hair. Yeah, absolutely. Um, my skill specialty. Yeah, so uh, then, yeah, that was movement selection. So <clears throat> so the next step, step four, is choose a skill specialty one skill that you are proficient in and we decided that rabbits were acrobatics yeah i think that acrobatics is makes sense for these creatures and you know maybe other people think that there are other skills that would fit better for their version of a hair and that's fine Right, and um, I had a thought maybe we could have two skill proficiencies, kind of like, uh, I guess we didn't need to because we we're changing up backgrounds and we'll get the skill exactly. proficiencies from that. But um, exactly. maybe we could and have then, it so we got more than just acrobatics for hair. Exactly. So you can choose one skill proficiency, which is all skills, and then step five is choose a special ability from the ability pool that we provide. And so you can find that ability pool, Baron, in the uh, Race yep. to Creature Excel sheet. Yep, I'm on it right now. Um, so there are or traits, I guess is what I'm calling them. I don't know. We'll have to figure out what I'm calling them. And so basically what I did is I looked through a bunch of the races in the monster manual and the player's handbook and Bolo's guide and jotted down what 
kind of special abilities or traits these creatures had and um, tried to write them all down so we could have a pool that we could select from based on what you think your creature or what fits best for your creature type. Man, there's some good ones on here. I right? went through them a few times, but there are some solid ones. Like I'm thinking right now, either brave, because I'm so, going like the the hero aspect. Yeah, exactly. Where you get advantage versus fear saving throws. Right, like Martin the Warrior has brave, bro. <laughs> yeah, exactly. He definitely does. Or nimble escape, which also kind of makes sense for my character. Disengage or hide as a bonus action. Yeah, that's that's really good. You know, exactly. You're like this monk hair. So. Yeah, so. Um, yeah, I guess I didn't say my class at all. I'm a forced hair monk. From the woodlands. But we'll From, the, yeah, the heartlands. Um, um, so something, you know, other things that are here. Um, one thing I wanted to talk about was the, I was just looking at right before we started this call was, um, the cantrip trait. And so I don't know if I want them to be able to select any cantrip. So yeah. There's some... Like, yeah. There's some pretty OP cantrips. So I was looking through the list and I was thinking of restricting it to a few, you know, like dancing lights maybe friends, guidance, light, mage hand, mending, right. message. Like the more the natural or uh, utility yeah. spell. Yeah, exactly. Uh, unless you think... No, no, um, I think that's a good idea. I just don't want to give them like, the ability to attack with this cantrip, I guess, is what I'm saying. No, that's fair. I mean, realistically, everything already gets like a natural weapon. With claws yeah, exactly. So, defending. yeah. Um, okay. And let's Fury see. of the Small. I love that one. What is that one? Deal extra damage equal to your level on a successful hit to a creature larger than you once for long rest. Ooh, nice. Like, uh, that's just so cool. Especially if you got to like a later game setting. And it's like a mouse fighting a wolf or something. <laughs> it's like fear of the yeah, small. level ten. <laughs> yeah, an extra ten damage. It's bad, exactly. Right? So you know. So, it, how many do, of these do you think we should be able to choose, or do you think we should like tier them so you can, that it's like in this tier and one trait from this tier or yeah, something? You like three points. You can do like yeah. Three level system. ones, uh, one level two and level, level one, or a level three. Level exactly. One. That's too complex, or you think that that is a... Uh... No, that, I mean, it'll definitely be something we can play with, and we can always come up with more of these as we, like, come up with different mm -hmm. uh, region settings and stuff. So it might be nice to just get, like, the standard ones, and, you know, you, can, you and I can start fleshing out some other ones as we get some more. Uh, time in this setting. Yeah. Um, um, and then I think... For the record, I chose Nimble Escape. Okay, cool. And then and the that's last... the character. Okay, and then the next thing we need to do is choose your background. My which... region. Exactly. We're going to <clears throat> make this you know yeah i think we talked about it a little in the last video but um essentially uh it's fair to assume that anyone everyone has a job before they go adventuring um and those jobs change depending on where you live especially in a society that's is heavily based on nature as uh, as ours so um my thought is replacing the I guess it's not just my thought, obviously. Um, replacing the backgrounds with where you're from and getting resistances and skills and proficiencies based on that. 
Exactly. Um, and I got the backgrounds here in my uh, player's handbook brought up. Um, cool. So I unfortunately don't have mine. No worries. Handy. I'm just looking at it for kind of like a, what we should include. Um, pretty much it's a, you know, a brief description, two skill proficiencies, some tool proficiencies, languages, uh, equipment, and like two a bit to a, a feature and like a, another characteristic and then you obviously got your personality traits but yeah and so th yeah personality traits that's going to be a real tough uh, you know man <sighs> i don't know what we're i think uh, i think that'll be easier than we think because it's not like we're doing it for a profession we're doing it for like a, a region so it can be more like culturally found rather yeah. than so I, it might be easier than it looks like personality traits of this region like oh you're from yeah. the north you're usually a little bit colder you know a little bit hardier whatever yeah if you're from the desert region maybe you're a little bit more relaxed or active at night maybe yeah value water cool. yeah um, Woodland, you know, there's an abundance of everything, so you're probably a little snobbier, a little like, yeah, or uh, like pampered. Yeah, exactly. All right, so I am from the Heartland region. Okay. So, um, my character is the descendant of the Hare royal family here in the Heartlands. So what do you think would be two skill proficiencies of something in the Heartlands? Okay, so uh, am I correct in stating that typically in backgrounds they have like a few skills and they say choose two? No, that is the, um, the class, I think. Oh. Uh, the background is just here's two skills that you're proficient with. Okay. Okay. Hmm. Let me um let me pull up a list of skills. I guess maybe history might be one. Yeah. That's, that's and I guess since we're we're only having so many regions, maybe we could do that, like pick two of this list. Yeah. Yeah. Um, you know, nature. Probably not something like survival, but maybe something right. like insight. Yep, yep, for sure. Uh, history, persuasion, maybe medicine or religion. Yeah. No, oh, I guess it depends. Yeah, religion could be one. Yeah. Um, I feel like for me personally, I would probably be insight and medicine, if those were two that you would foresee being here. Wait, what in medicine? Um, insight. Insight and medicine? Yep. Yeah. 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 Um, my guy is very like... He's seen both ends of the, the the hierarchy of things, so he's good at kind of picking up on people, I guess is the way I'd say it. And I was a monk, so healing people's pretty dope, yo. Yeah. Um, next is Any, like, like cool proficiencies, huh? Yep. Yeah, um how often do tool proficiencies even really come up? Well, you know, I mean, for things like um, maybe the charlatan is proficient in uh, these tools or something, True. right? Maybe. Um, I or know like the an artisan, way. you know, is proficient in some sort of... Yeah, trade. Disguise. Yeah. The charlatan's good at disguise. Um, so yeah, 
I think one of the other kind of like standard things we give is like a resistance based on where you're from. Yeah. So like if you're exactly. from the north, you get cold resistance. Mm -hmm. um, and I haven't really thought about that one too much. That was still kind of an idea. But uh, I like it. What, it so makes yeah, sense. read some of the the proficiencies of the um, backgrounds in the player's handbook. Um, <clears throat> for are you talking skill proficiencies or tools? Uh, tools. Yeah, what kind of um, tools? Charlatan uh, gets disguise kit and forgery kit proficiencies. Uh, okay. Crim criminal gets thieves tool proficiencies. Okay. Um, entertainer, you get disguise kit and the musical instrument. So, I guess my question then is: Do you think that a region is really appropriate to replace a background? I don't know. Uh, yeah, I, I do. Because, I mean, okay. realistically, I personally only see a few um, kind of – unless you're, like, really going the route of, like, a tradesman or, you know, mm -hmm. like – because you get musical proficiencies from being a bard or whatever. Yeah. So unless, like, yeah. that was really important to your character background, I feel like that's just something you could work through with your DM at, you know, their discretion. Okay. Yeah. Um, so basically, like maybe you okay. travel, so a background would make more sense for you rather than where you're from. Yeah. Uh, but overall, I think so, that in, regions would be fine to replace backgrounds. Okay. So for woodland, then I would say like they're probably the most technological, and um. So maybe their tool proficiencies could include, um, you know, things like smiths and potters and carpenters. And so it's like more and, and farming, definitely a lot of yeah. farming, I think. All right. So here's an idea. So, for all areas except the heartland, you'll get a resistance to an environmental condition, whether it be the heat or drought, or not drought, but dry. I guess dry could be one of them. It's heat, but uh, cold. And then for the heartland, since it's kind of like a temperate, like you get three or four seasons here, it's not too bad. Um, you get a tool proficiency instead. Okay. Okay. Yeah, I think I like that. I mean, that doesn't have because to be set that, in stone. No, but I like that. Like, okay. And I mean, we could leave it open to where, you know, you can kind of say that you, you get some skills from this sort of background when you make your character, but it's not like the primary focus of that. Yeah. It could be at the discretion of the end. Yeah. Yeah. Um, okay. So what's the, the next one? Um, languages. I figure that there's the same common that there is on everything. Yeah. I think there's probably, you know, there's a, there's probably like a surface dweller, uh, a bird and a, uh, like underground kind of language. So just maybe like three types of like languages kind of. Yeah, I could see that. Or like, a. Like an amphibian language, if we include frogs. Yeah, that that too exactly. Right. Um, 
I think Heartland would be kind of like one of your choice. Um, I feel like everyone. Yeah. I guess it really depends on your race. Yeah. Hmm. Which, as a hair, I'm for sure got common. So, and maybe yeah. I also have the burrower as my my choice. But I can talk with, about the burrow. I mean, any region, it seems like you would have your choice. Like, I guess that doesn't really matter. Yeah. So maybe not have language proficiencies in these backgrounds. Okay. Yeah, I, I guess, guess we'll have to, we'll talk about that one more. They can be like dialects, but I wouldn't, I don't know. We'll talk about that one more because I feel like some races, like foxes being a little bit more tricky, they probably would have their own language. Um, Ooh. Of like, it'd be like uh, almost like a, a hobo, like signs language or symbol language. Yeah. But yeah. I feel like, you know, and then you'd have thieves like the can't. more, yeah, a thieves can't. And you'd have like the, the squirrels that there is a, there's a more spoken language rather than like written or anything and you got like the moles or something that'll like carve their language into stones yeah um, yeah that'll be something we'll have to play with in the future um yeah it's probably not super important for the the setting as is right now but, but i still don't think yeah it belongs in the backgrounds no i could see that all right that gives us something to play with here next week and last uh, is equipment, stuff you would kind of receive for being here. Okay, yeah, stuff you would get for that. So, um, for the woodland, you know, I would say you get one set of tools of your choice. Tools? Yeah, like um, like artisan tools, probably. You know, whether you're a right. potter or and a lumberjack, or, that can uh, kind of be determined by what you did it, beforehand. That can be like the touch on background. Exactly. Like you know, for the guild artisan, there's 20 options: wood carvers, weavers, smiths, shipwrights, potters, painters, masons, leather workers, glass blowers, cooks, and bakers. Uh -huh. Cooks and baker, you know, I think that's right. probably farmers. We we should definitely improve farmers. Brewers. Brewers are a huge part of the, the society. Absolutely. Um, so like I think that's to me, that's the woodland society, you know, it's like Yeah. Feasts, More parties. Cultural. Like, exactly. Yeah. Really like tradesmen you know i think we'll have to think about this one a little bit specifically just because each one of them is different in each one of the backgrounds so i think that we should make these pretty specific culturally to where the person is from so like what is something that everybody in the heartlands has what is something that everybody in the north has like a thick wool blanket but other than just a, a bedroll or stuff like yeah, that. Yeah, okay. So, yeah, sorry. Tools, uh, I think they should, yeah, at least have one of those sets of tools what, to whatever their profession is. Because to me, woodland creatures are usually, like, settled. Right. So they would probably, you know, they would, they would probably have a good amount of things yeah um, for sure so you know a tent a backpack a bedroll three days rations like whatever they would need for an adventure they would have because it's probably very popular to go adventuring and how right. you know how quaint we're going adventuring And I so, can, I can you know, that. a dish set, all, you know, rope.
Yeah, I, I'm having trouble thinking of stuff up off the top of my head. So that'll definitely be another thing that I'm going to cogitate. Scroll. Out. Yeah, maybe yeah, like your, uh, your lineage, like a, a scroll of pedigree or something. Like maybe that's because I feel like the Heartlands is pretty like based in the champions um, sect of religion in this setting. So yeah. like tracing your lineage back to a certain person is really important to people here. Yeah, ex yeah, exactly. Um, traveler's clothes. And last for this one, because like I said, I kind of want to revisit this here in the future once we've had some time to think about it. Um, but last is kind of like the um, where you sit, um, like guild artists and there's guild business. It's kind of like what you were, um, what guild. Um, you got hermits, like why you chose the life of seclusion. Um, so maybe that's where we could do the background part of it. It's like, what did you do prior? Like that yeah. was what your job was. Okay. Yeah, that makes that makes sense. Yeah, like your. Um, like what? Perf <laughs> this is the region you were from. This is what you did, and you'll get like a yeah. small little thing for it. Yeah, you, the woodland is like very civilized. So your place in civilization there. Right. And how do you fit? How do? You, what's your contribution? I was royal royal family, so I'm kind of like the the noble, if you will. Exactly. Um, okay. And maybe get like a skill or trade or something that goes along with that. You'd probably have persuasion or. Or, you know, what what does the noble actually have? What is the history, noble? Uh, history and persuasion. <laughs> but for the for being a noble, isn't there? Oh, um, no, feature this, position of privilege. Yeah, this, that's the the feature. That's, yeah, that that would basically be what you would have with your right on. You know, with where you fit in society, because if everything gives you like something, but I guess not not all of the other. Yeah, no. Well, we anyway. can. I like. I get what you're saying. I like the. I get, and I'm with it. I'm just having trouble putting into words what I wanted to say. Um, but yeah, absolutely. So as the more noble um, physician here in the Heartlands, um, I am recognized in court. I have, you know, some sort of a reputation built for me. I'm not just some nobody. Yeah, here in the exactly. Heartlands. Versus if someone were a... Uh, like the hermit fisherman. yeah and it's like yeah. yeah you're from the heartlands but you're still kind of more on the outskirts of society so so people would know your place like your place is known in society if you're a brewer people know that that's what you do right and you will be treated according to your position, to your yeah. position. Damn, times are hard here in the fucking heartlands. <laughs> they're they're not hard. They're just organized, you know. Right? Yeah. Very... Absolutely. Um. So, all right. That kind of I think wraps up our character creation. Yeah. Uh, one last thing I think though, you should choose. We last time we talked about the feral versus civil spectrum. Yep. I think you should choose or actually actually I think sure. your background should give you what level of ferility you start with. What do you okay. think about that? Yeah, I mean I was it's either 
we give you the choice of what you should be, or you just come up with it on the spot, the discretion of your DM anyway. So including yeah. an example probably wouldn't be a bad idea. Because, I mean, I guess yeah, so in my I mind, think... like, you can be a noble from the heartlands and you'd be more civil, but if you're a noble from, like, a nomadic tribe in the north, you're going to be maybe more feral or something. Exactly. Exactly. <clears throat> so the background, since it's tied to the region, I think that's a good indicator of feralty versus civility. Right. And maybe that is just something you come up with, uh, with your DM, like in relation to like your overall character design. Um, mm -hmm. Cause like, let's say you're a hermit from the heartlands and you go one of two ways. You're either like somebody that is on the outside of society or someone that's in the middle of town, but just keeps to themselves, you know? Mm -hmm. So, um, one could be more feral than the other, even though they're from the same location. So I guess we just have to make sure that all three of the buffs are equally as enticing. So it's like choosing either one or two, um, would still make sense. And I know we have already talked about this and we already are on the right path to do that. Um, so, uh, just kind of, I mean, I feel like that's also something that you'd evaluate with your character over the course of your game. Yeah. yeah. Like your You're actions right. would kind of choose that. I mean, and that might necessarily be something Maybe important. Maybe we just give game. like regions plus or minus to feralty. Right. Like, we say, okay, if you're a woodland creature, then you're given a plus one to civility automatically just because you live in yeah, the woodland. Yeah. Uh, if, if you're from you, the... Yeah, the outlands, you know, you automatically get a minus one because right. there's far fewer established cities and cultures and that kind of things. So maybe maybe Heartlands would be like a plus two, and like the close, uh, close coast would be like a plus one, and like yeah. the, the wild north would be a plus or negative one, mm -hmm. and then like the desert would be like a negative two. Yeah, Something exactly. Like that. Exactly. And then right you on. can still establish wherever you start, right. you know, but those just kind of. Because right, I so think like, backgrounds should really be shaped that way too, you know, like yeah. this is how you were brought up. So So like if you're from the Heartlands, you can't have a negative three towards your civility because you automatically yeah, get that plus one or plus two. <laughs> exactly. They would you would not be a part of that culture. You couldn't be. Yeah, it's not there. Right yeah. now. I dig that. Okay. All right. Okay. So the, that's cool. The sake of my character, I'm going to go with a plus two civility. Yes. And, and I totally forgot what we were going to do with those. I, I think I have them I written down we're... here somewhere. Um, we can get back to those. Okay. Um, all right, solid. I'm pretty sure that kind of wraps up all of the changes to creation that we we're going to do because I know we're keeping classes and stuff the same for the most part. Yeah. Um, so this character is hopefully going to be um, who I bring when you run your quest. Um, so I guess without receiving any spoilers or anything like that, because I want to go into it as fresh as possible. Um, what are your, your primary focuses for stuff you want to <laughs> get across in this game? Um, I know there's obviously the quest, but what are, I guess, some of the details you're going to focus on? Yeah, so basically we are entering the resurgence of nature right in in this kind of yep. timeline um, yeah so um like civilizations are starting to but this is like just almost like this is like going to be kind of the turning point so i'm 
I'm thinking like there has to be some some major like creature slash civil versus feral um, conflicts going on. Right. -o. And I would like you guys to be championing civility, which will be hard to like, I guess, motivate the, the players to do. Well, I know my character is already kind of leaning that way. I can't guarantee our friend Holt, the badger, um, to champion civility. Yeah, exactly. Um, so <laughs> what, I, you know, like, this is going to have to show like I, I want I want the message to be like you need to this is what so what I'm thinking is basically having to tie it in with some figure from the age of the anointed. A fair champion. Exactly. A fair champion is going to have to directly speak with one of these player characters. And um, are you going to be basing that off of what races we choose, or do you have something in mind? It's going to be based off the races that you choose. Right on. Um, and really, I mean, I want there to be so th I think that's going to take care of the premonition. You know, one of the player characters is going to have a premonition. Right. It seems like one of these... So I'm not really sure how I'm going to treat this. the last game that you... The half game, the unfinished game that you and Holt played in. You know? Right. So... I guess from I guess what I remember, we though we only got through half of it, we got to a good spot where like you could change how you wanted to play it. I know you had like a, a conspiracy or a cult in mind, and you can still do that because there's obviously going to be something sowing the seeds of discord. Um, yeah, in this area, so. We really exactly. didn't so receive actually, too much yeah. information on that, so you could take it however you wanted to. Still, yeah. If, if yeah, I think I'm just that actually, and have it be, you know, Cinder and Slick leave, and you guys obviously it's going to it's going to start in this wreckage. Right. So. That's probably how we'll play it. Actually, I think that's really good to just pick up after where we where we kind of left. If off anything, that game. was like that was like the prologue. Yeah, that was kind of like setting the stage for what the fuck's going on right now in this spot particularly. And then, yeah, I oh man, okay, that's great because we're going to. I now know like how the first session's going to go, obviously, because I've already kind of planned it. But that's the thing. I feel like maybe I gave up too much, so I'll have to switch a few things around. I mean, either way, I try to do my best if I have certain details uh, that other people don't to not necessarily... To not reveal it. <laughs> yeah, like like I was saying earlier, like would my character know that? Probably not. All right, then so I'm not going to say anything. Okay. Yeah. yeah, I trust that. So we'll be fine. Um and like like how you did in the beginning of our our game, uh, you got like little background things from everybody. And I know yeah. I've seen I've seen your notes for the game. And Slick's character was supposed to kill my character's father. Yeah. yeah. And obviously he didn't tell me that. And I hadn't known up until I had seen the notes. And I was like, oh, that son of a bitch. He was gonna kill my dad. Yeah, that was gonna. I mean. He was trying to already, and I was like, uh, I don't, I, you're not supposed yeah, to. It makes that. sense now in hindsight, he was really eager to kill my dad. He was yeah. trying really hard. Yeah. And I was like, yeah, yeah that's fine. Do, do your thing, bro. <laughs> um, so anyway, uh, yeah, I know where we'll pick up.
pick up where we left off. So yes, one of these characters is going to have premonition tying them to the age of the anointed. I need, I want you guys to be champions of civility. So I will try to show, and I also want there to be a conflict with nature. So I'll try to show a feral nature as a villain. If that makes sense. I mean, yeah. I mean, realistically, any kind of monster would represent that. You know what I'm yeah. saying? Yeah, exactly. So there's going to be, obviously, um, I feel like in the Red Wall books, there's always levels of monsters. For instance, you have one creature that is out for revenge, like, Clooney the Scourge, and then you have really uh, another set of characters in conflict with uh, Osmodeus. You know, really, oh, he's yeah, like yeah. a, a okay. kind of different, a different yeah, villain, but there's... still. More than one direction the book goes. There's always yeah. like the the adventure story and like the red wall story. Yeah. Um. So I guess I don't know exactly how you plan on doing it, but maybe having like a timeline of events that takes place while we're doing the quest. So like after milestones, it's like we get word this is the current status of what's going on back there. Next milestone, this is the current status of what's going on there. Um. And either we could roll that for like a random probability or you could, or I, mean, I, I could, could just be, you know, throwing this yeah. idea out there. Well, I but, mean, Martin had to fight both though. Yeah, absolutely. Or sorry, Matthias, right? Matthias had to fight both. And I guess it was more of Redwall holding out against Clooney while Martin was looking for the sword. Cause I know like, they tried to climb over the wall and Bella pushed him over and it yeah. wrecked Clooney. And then you, they, they tried yeah. digging under the wall and yeah. they dumped boiling water in the hole and they built yeah. a siege tower and they set it on fire. And so there was some serious shit coming at the red wallers in the first place. Yeah. 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 Martin was just like running away at every opportunity he could to fucking go be a hero. And it's like, damn it, Martin. Well, no, no, no. It was uh, yeah. Martin, Matthias. Matthias. Yeah, Matthias, 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 Matthias. Cause he was getting Martin's sword. And then in Moss flower though, you know, like there is kind of like the initial conflict with Sarmina and then a quest to Salamandastron yep. and then a return so I think that I also kind of want to do that where there is first an initial introduction to the bad to guy, a conflict, and then you need to go on a quest to, to find the way gather to gather something bad guy. to beat the bad guy. And while you're doing that, you obviously have to overcome another challenge on the conflict. Way. And then once you overcome that, you will gain what you need to finally return and save, you know, like that's, that's kind of the like building blocks, I guess, that you need, that I, I would like to do. Yeah, I might, I might go that route with you and try and use like a, a red wall story as a, not like take a story from red wall, but use one as an no. example of like yeah. how they, um, pace stuff i guess and like what's going on because there's some pretty dope because i remember like um matimeo matimeo is probably my, one of my favorites that i've read so far um because it brings back a character from book one that you think Matthias, dies. yeah oh the bad guy slagar, oh, oh, the, cruel. slagar the cruel slagar yeah. the cruel is yeah. so hard yeah dude and it's he's just, it's yeah. just like everyone's like why? bit by Osmodeus. Yeah, right? yeah, absolutely. Everyone's like, dude, why are you doing this? And he's like, because I fucking hate Redwall. And they're like, yeah. well, you can't hate it that much. And he's like, no, I do. I hate it that much. <laughs> and it's yeah. all. It also kind of reminds me of like, I guess there's a lot of analogies here. Then you got Matimeo 
who is like the the mm-hmm. cocky upstart son of the warrior. Yeah. Um, he didn't have to earn anything, and he gets enslaved. Yeah. And is a slave for a good three hundred pages, and you're like, all right, you know, stay humble. <laughs> and Matthew yeah. was like, all right, so maybe I was kind of being a, a douche. So I guess there should be maybe lessons to learn uh, yeah. in these challenges that we overcome. Absolutely. Each each creature needs to learn something on this campaign. It's hard to do that ever, for each creature, each mission, you know? Right. Or each uh, uh, session. But I think it's easy to do to focus on one creature learning a lesson in one session, and that kind of helps guide that session. And I mean, really, like, what kind of conflict is it? We, if we do, kind of focus on more of like the characters' goals and ambitions, maybe problems with themselves before the game. Mm-hmm. Um, maybe get like a couple questions that you can just answer kind of get you uh and then work off that to yeah make that more of a thing exactly Um, so like what would you think is a a lesson that gilderoy needs to learn well gilderoy has learned very many lessons already in his life but he's still quite young um so maybe uh i think he needs to learn the value of family Boy, I think you're right there. But I think um, th- that being one of them that I was going, that is like the overall thing he needs to learn. Um, right, yeah. Is how, and I think his lesson with family is, um, you know, Ark, or what is it? Blood of the Covenant, or thinner than the water. Yeah, blood thicker than water, yeah. Yeah. Um, like his his companions will be his family, and that'll be his lesson oh. he has to learn. Okay, but, yeah. I mean, who knows? His father could have been assassinated. We could play that. You know, Slick succeeded. It wouldn't necessarily have to play out the exact way we ended it. Um, but also, with Gilderoy being as young as he is, I feel like he's still very emotional in his. Um, his thinking about like the lessons he's learned. So he, he has seen both sides of like royalty and then being a monk. He, he's seen both ends of the spectrum of uh, wealth. So he thinks he's got a pretty good idea of people. And maybe there's like an overconfidence there. He's like, oh, well, yeah. I've seen both. I obviously would know better than anyone else. Whereas later on, it'd be like, I have literally experienced both ends of the spectrum my experiences have taught me to learn better rather than what I assume I know. Yeah, and maybe some less... commoners still don't treat him very well, though, and they even, like, blame him for the burning of this. Absolutely. Whereas in, like, the beginning of these quests, he's like, no, I am one of you! Whereas yeah. at the end, he's like, you are right. I, You don't get to choose your blood, so yeah. I have to share this burden of yeah. consequence. Exactly. So, and try to even maybe and try to like take responsibility and like establish a new nation. A new <sighs> woodland. Gilderoy's got a story still. And that's why I was kind yeah. of like, man, I want to make a new guy, but it's like, ah, uh, if I let Gilderoy go, he'll just be another level three that never made it. Yeah. That happens to a lot of them. Uh, oh, yeah. But I mean, I have been playing since, like, September of last year. Um, I've known about Dungeons & Dragons since I was, like, eight, but never had the the mental capacity to actually play until about a year ago. And, like, I I am my home group's, like, go-to DM just because I'm the only one that wants to play bad enough to come up with the shit. And my one buddy started DMing, and I got into his game... And it was like probably a six month game. And I played one character the whole time. Everybody nice. else at this point had played like two or three and got to try some new stuff. And my guy, I had one character because that was the only game 
outside of the games that I run that anyone had run. So I was stuck with Halfling Rogue for six months. And it's like, oh, yeah, classic. Sor <laughs> Sorcerer sounds dope. Druid sounds dope. I want to yeah. be a cleric. And everyone's like, I don't feel like running the game. It's like, oh. fuck. <laughs> Fuck. But Halfling Rogue is probably my favorite class and race combination. It's a really um, so I get to be Frodo or Bilbo or Samwise yeah. is the hero, let's be real. But <laughs> um so hopefully hopefully we get enough games either started up with this or going betwixt us that we can try some class options and like feral versus civil um because it'd almost be worth making a character you know the exact same way twice but having them on both ends of like how feral or civil they are yeah just yeah. to see how they would play out if the differences were big enough um that's true yeah that's a good point yeah and i know i I, I could already think of a bunch of different... I want to play a druid. I want to play a wizard that focuses only on divination spells. <laughs> so I can be the oracle. Yeah, so like that would be different. really cool. Like, you are you are like a, like, foreseer, foreteller, and you're searching for the person. Exactly. You're like a conduit yeah. for the spirits or whatever. Yeah, and for like, sure the DM can use you as a tool at any time. <laughs> like, all right, exactly. Yeah. I'm talking for you now. Yeah. <laughs> um, I want to play a Fox character. My, my buddy Jay, like I said, he's, he wants to play a Fox. Um, and I think he chose cleric. Mm. And I'm jealous because that's what I would want to play is I would want to play like a Fox of a trickster God. Yeah. Um, that, I would still have healing, but I also have like illusions and stuff spells. So it's like, for sure. Um, kind of a lot like, uh, oh, I cannot remember her name from the first Red Wall book. Um, oh, oh, uh, Fortuna? Fortuna. Is it? No, Fortuna, I think, is in Moss Flower. That's Sarmina's uh, right hand. Hmm. I'm listening to that one right now, so. Okay. I'm pretty sure that's what it is. But nonetheless, the vixen from yeah. uh, book one. Nagar, the cruel's mom, right? Yep. Uh, using your healing to, like, people need healers. Yeah. You're essential. So, like, having to come in when someone wrecks a boss and it's like, oh, yeah, I'll help you. And gather as much fucking information as I possibly can to sell to the yeah. other side. Yeah. A cool... Because, like, I feel like we're just right now getting, like, the vanilla games going in, like, the standard adventurer or the standard kill the monster. And eventually, yeah. once we we play it enough, it'll be like, all right, you know, you guys are an infiltration, uh, like, a spy unit from Sila. this city in the Heartlands sent to another city in the Heartlands. Um, you are spying on, you know. We can get into, like, the more specific games. And that's gonna be the dope. Like, like you're fucking. You were saying a, a pirate or sailing based adventure. Yeah, yeah um, sea rat versus otters. Oh man, that'd be so fun. There, there's a lot of potential here for that. And like, yeah, I there's got to be idea. like planes too. Like, there's got to be some like conflict <clears throat> out in the open grasslands. You know. Yeah, absolutely. You could do like large scale battles between like groups of critters. I have like, like an idea for like just being like a third party villain, just like ravaging both sides. You know, right. if they're they like dragons, that. they fucking just yeah. Oh, Everyone fuck. cowers if an eagle is coming by or an owl. You know, like no, it stops <laughs> a fight. <laughs> we gotta stop. It, yeah, every, yeah. I have an idea for like a, a western. Like, uh, have you ever seen the movie Rango? With uh, the chameleon, uh, yeah, yeah, something yeah. like that. That is the exact same thing as this setting, just in a Western yeah. version. Exactly, yeah. And that would be sick. It's like, what's the big bad guy? It's like it's this is fucking big ass rabbit snake. Okay, yeah, <laughs> he's gonna yeah. fuck exactly. fuck everybody up. Like, yeah, that's something that has to be there. You know, some 
crazy big creature that's villainous, whether it's a boar or a yeah. bear. Boar or, is what I want to do for awesome. like the the giants rampaging kind of setting. Because I feel like boar would be savage. Um, yeah. But those are kind of like equivalent to giants. I picture like yeah. monitor lizards, uh, rattlesnakes, like big reptiles to be the equivalent mm -hmm. of like demons or devils. Just because yeah. it's like Alligators. if a critter sees that, it's like that's gonna kill me. Yep. Exactly. <laughs> I'm dead. Yeah. That's it. Oh, and that's a good that's a good link. The reptiles to devils. I like that. Well, I mean, Redwall did it in book one, calling yeah. the, the adder Asmodeus, and it's yeah. like true. True yeah. as fuck. <laughs> if yeah. I seen an adder and I was a, a mouse, it's like I'm I'm dead. All right. Yeah. Cool. Man. Um, that just was a good uh, representation that Brian Jakes did in my mind. Yeah. Because it's fucking true as fuck. I just started actually reading uh, Outcast of Redwall. Oh yeah. Um, See, I know I've said this before to you, but I haven't read these in probably t 11 years. It's Maybe way more, more. Like, gruesome than I remember. See, I don't even think I really read them as a kid. It was like, all right, you know, I'm going to put my bookmark here now. I've read this much. Because <laughs> I was reading some of it. It's like, this used to be my favorite one, and I don't remember any of it. I don't know why it was my <laughs> yeah, favorite right. one. Um. Like, I'm looking forward to The Long Patrol, which I think is the one after this one. Yeah. Because it's nice. only rabbits, and the rabbits are my favorite thing in this book because they're all, dude, cheerio, they're... fuck, <laughs> fuck, what, what? Yeah. And it's like, oh, they're so cool. <laughs> Plus, they're with yeah, the bad ass. It's like, oh, so you're just going to run around and kill everything. I think it was like, right. um, I want to say it was book three, uh, Monty Mayo. There's like the long patrol that's chilling at Redwall, and like uh -huh. something's it's Slagar's laying siege, or no, Slagar's not there. It's like something. I don't know. It might have been book four, actually, Bellmaker with one of the pirate crews. Um, or Mariel of Redwall, not not Bellmaker, Mariel. Um, but like three, three hairs just fuck up an entire legion of fucking my or rats it's like oh, oh man these are savage but i'm reading this one now and that was kind of where i got the idea of like the dreams because right now sun flash is having dreams of salamandastrin mm -hmm. and I had been curious up to this point, like, what exactly called the Badgers. So maybe, you know, we, we should come up with some key locations that are, like, culturally yeah. important to some races and not at all to others. Um, yeah, that's a good point. And that can just be, like, a hook into someone's history at maybe some Maybe that's point. what Holt will tell me. Like, he's on pilgrimage to this place. Right, and it's, like, an ancestral smithy of the badgers or something mm -hmm. but yeah. uh in this book he's like having like dreams about salamandastrin and like the ocean and stuff and then they meet up with his family and like the girls or the little girls are like singing songs for them and like one of the songs the girl the little girl doesn't know all the words to has something about the beach and he's like whoa, whoa, i want to know more about this song so like having like the premonition or the dream sequence or like the, the, the tie there at the beginning, you could like hint at it throughout yeah. the quest with like yeah. small little details that your character's like, what did you just say? And you know, maybe when you say it again, it's like something different and like they just misheard you and it's like the, the signs around you. So that'd be nice. stuff that you consider. But I think um, that's pretty much all the questions and stuff that I've got for now. I know we're going yeah. on an hour and 15 minutes here. so um, Yeah, that's, that's cool with me, man. If there's anything 
uh, to finish up that you'd like to say before I wrap this up? No. Um, thanks for uh, asking the questions and chatting. And uh, I think we got some cool, cool things going. And I will be posting an interest post soon in the Absolute Tabletop Facebook for two more players for this quest. Right now. I'll, uh, I guess it's not important, but I was going to say I put a character um, concept out there, but I, I'm already in it, so whatever. Yeah. Right now. All right, everybody. Thank you for anybody who turn, tunes into this video in the future. We didn't have any viewers here today, which is perfectly <laughs> all right. Um, I know I'll probably check this out a few times myself. Um, this is RWD Gaming. We do all sorts of gaming related videos. Um, hopefully putting out more content as we get most more, more balls rolling. So, uh, till next time. Thanks. See ya.